Hello everybody and thank you very much for joining us today for this special webinar session. Um, this has been designed for our international offer holders joining us for the September 2021 intake. All of you will be offer holders for our art and design courses within the School of Creative Arts. So this is going to be an excellent chance for you to hear a bit more about the facilities that you'll be able to see once you're on campus the opportunities that will be available, hear from some other student stories as well. Um, the session will be recorded. It's nothing to worry about. It's just in case anybody has any connectivity issues today, we'll be able to share the recording after the session as well. After the slideshow, we will be doing a Q&A. So if any of you do have any questions during the session, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You can ask an anonymous question if you like, and myself and colleagues will be reading those out to our panel as well. Now, I'll just introduce you to our panel. So you've got me, I'm Kat Fulton. I work in the International Office and the International Marketing Officer. We've also got Jess Hart, she's our senior conversion officer also in the international office. We've then got special guests with us today, um, Dr. Silvio Carter. Now he's the head of art and design. He's also the director of the professional doctorates and the co-leader for climate and urban systems center for climate change research as well. And also Robert Wheatley, who's the social media and outreach coordinator in our School of Creative Arts as well. So you're in very good hands today, everyone. If you do have any questions, we'll be able to answer them all between us as well. So just to give you an overview of how the session will be going today, um, we'll give you a bit of an introduction about art and design. Again, showing you those opportunities, the facilities and what you can expect when you join Hearts in September. We'll also then give you a bit of an update on the start of term preparation. We know there's a lot of things to think about this year, especially with COVID restrictions on travel and extra things that you'll need to prepare. And then we'll move to our Q&A section. So do ask your questions throughout um, and we'll answer those at the end as well for you. So what I'll do now, um, I'll pass to Silvio, who's going to talk to you a bit about art and design. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Kat. Thank you. Um, so my name is Silvio. I um, I would normally have this session face to face, so in person. I will normally um, look at all of you and try to establish some sort of um, connection to see whether um, you are following what I'm saying or you are bored by what I'm saying. Um, but unfortunately, this time I just need to guess. So hopefully. Um, you will be all listen to what I have to say. And please do ask any question at the end or at any time, um, because it's important that you get the information that um, that you need. Um, yeah, so um, again, my, um, again, I'm Silvio and my background is architecture and I'm a qualified architect, but um, I'm also uh, a designer in general, which means that um, I don't know if some of you are um, interested in architecture, or interior architecture, or interior design in particular. But what I want to point out is that the skills that you normally have in design and, and in art and design in general are, as we say, transferable, which means that you will learn things that will help you to do basically anything with the art and design. Most of our students will um, move after they graduate, we move from one type of career to another. So you might um, have a training in interior design, for instance, and then end up uh, working in a creative agency doing graphic design work, for instance, or vice versa. So um, in this period, I think you should consider that it's very important for you to um, well, make, make the most of it, make the most of what we offer to you. And I think you will see through these pictures that are in this presentation that um, we try to convey this or to, to kind of give you this feeling of uh, community. And when I say that, you have to picture yourself uh, in a normal Tuesday morning coming to uni. Um, and uh, obviously you got your lectures, you got your workshops, your seminars, your activities, but also the rest of the day, the idea is that you just stay around in the campus, uh, in the school, and you go to the workshop and you do, you know, you're doing some, some work there. Then you go into the computer lab or you go into your studio if you are, if you are into fine art. 
and um, the whole point is for you to be part of this community, which means to meet with other students, perhaps from other courses. And, you know, obviously that works on two levels. That works on the um, professional level. So it's part of your training to be able to uh, interact, but also to collaborate with students from um, other areas with different interests, uh, because that is what would most likely happen in your professional career, your professional life, where you will be um, working alongside with people with different expertise. So again, graphic designer, with pro designer, with um, fine artist, with architects, um, perhaps uh, working on the same project. I personally work with um, with sculpt sculptures. You know, we um, we design the structure for uh, for fine artists to do um, very very big installations, for instance. Um, and they're just an example, um, but also works on the social level of your experience, which means that you will most likely make very good friends um, in these years at university. And, um, and most of the time, these friends will, will be with you also in your professional life, which is quite, quite uh, an important thing. You know, um, some of us will have opened our first office or practice or studio uh, with university uh, you know, colleagues, um, and which, is, which is a great thing. So you should have very high expectation for what is in front of you. Um, and obviously our job here, I'm trying to go through the lines that you see in this slide now, but um, most of us are here to facilitate this experience and to help you to go through this. So please do not look at us tutors as, um, well, some of us are boring, but uh, don't, don't look at us as boring uh, tutors and teachers who, you know, obviously are experts in their own subject and try to kind of transfer all this information and knowledge to you. That's not the way it works. Yes, it does work like that in, in, in the sense that we'll try to teach you and to give you all the information we have. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for uh, what for you and to make sure that you get the best experience possible with us. And um, and again, and that you, my personal job is to make sure that you are part you you get this idea of experience and you get this idea of community within the school, which is very important. Um, and again, um, so if you can, we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. So this is an example of, um, of things that you, you know, spaces or environments you will be, um, you will find yourself in. Um, we have a, a very wide range of workshops, um, that anything that ranges from what we call a 2D workshops, uh, where you work with textile, fabrics, uh, screen printing, um, to what we call 3D workshops, where you have um, you know, usual laser cutters, 3D printers, CNC routers, uh, drills. So when you uh, work with 3D elements, whether it's wood or, or uh, concrete or metal uh, or resin, um, gypsum, you know, whatever, whatever um, you're working on, um obviously uh, some of you might be applying uh, for for instance uh, photography um programs or fashion programs and obviously for those we have dedicated uh, workshop dedicated facilities for those so normally at this point i will ask uh, around the room who is uh, who is you know is um who applied for which program but i assume you are representing a little bit all programs so i'll talk about everything um Another important thing I want to mention is the um, is the loan store, and we are quite proud of it because um, it's basically a tiny room packed with. I don't know if you visit it or if you had um, seen picture of it, but um, it's packed with equipment for you to use. So you can borrow cameras, laptops, uh, tripods, you know, whatever you need um, for your um, for your uh, studies, which is great. I think you know you don't have to. Uh, buy all the equipment you need. You could just, um, you know, loan it uh, from us. And then again, you have to imagine that all these facilities are, um, you know, we are very vigilant uh, on these. So we buy new equipment based on what you guys are doing. So if we realize that we have different moments in the year where we ask uh, you to tell us how, is it, you know, how is your course is going and your projects are going, but also it's a good moment for you to say, listen, we might need more cameras for doing this particular work. And then, you know, normally we have budget for that and we, we facilitate that. So um, 
anything that the, the point here is that anything that you need to do in your project um, is here for you. And if it's not there, we make sure that it's there. Um, next slide, please. Cut. Yeah, so this little video, I think, will give you a little bit of flavor of what um, the, the kind of the feeling in the school might be. Hi, welcome to the School of Creative Arts at the University of Hertfordshire. I'm Lucy and this is George. And today we're going to show you around and give you some tips to help you make the most of your time here. The school teaches across five buildings in the creative corner of the College Lane campus. There's the FMM, Mercer, Todd, Lindop and Art and Design Building, all with state-of-the-art facilities for your degree. The hub of the school is the Art and Design Building. Here there's a gallery curated by UH Arts which features exhibitions by renowned artists all year round. If you fancy a break, there's our gallery cafe serving fresh food and coffee every day during term time. Also, just next door we have our art shop, our subsidised store which will stock all the materials that you might need for your course. Through the tunnel from the cafe is the student office, probably the most important spot in the school. It's here where you'll find all the programme administrators of your courses. The guys here are super kind and if, they, and if you need to, they'll walk you through the process of getting an extension or a serious adverse circumstances. If you're ever in doubt, this is the place to go. Downstairs from the cafe is our loan store where we keep all the equipment you may need to borrow for your course. If you need to borrow something, come downstairs and sign it out. But don't forget to return it, otherwise you may be fined. If you want to save a bit of money and bring your own food, why not use one of the kitchenettes, such as this one, located in the Lindop, Mercer, and Todd and FMM building. Come to the Hutton Hub if you need any support and guidance. Here you'll find careers and employment, the student centre, study abroad office, Santander Bank, You'll also find our Disability and Wellbeing Department, as well as our Dean of Students Office. We even have an on-campus pharmacy and medical centre, which we recommend all students sign up to, which offers vaccines, medication and sexual health support. The campus is a hive of activity, with places open seven days a week, 24 hours a day, like the LRC. It's got all the facilities and resources you need for your course. Which is really handy if you need to come here at 3am to write that essay you forgot about. It isn't just our physical resources and support that we're proud of within the school. We also offer an online platform. The CA Toolkit offers a wide range of comprehensive guidance for students, including extension forms, access times, and any other resources and information that you might need. We even have our own custom-built social network, which you can use to share your work in progress, display your finished pieces, and connect and collaborate with students from around the school. Yeah, so hopefully you will um, you will have seen a little bit of the feeling that you might expect in the school. So we're all here to help. There is a lot, lot of facilities, lot of uh, support, um, but there's also a lot of us going around and trying to help and trying to, or well, sometimes trying to be funny. <laughs> um, but um, so um, again. Uh, it's very important that you get this message um, from this presentation that we're all here for you and um, we're here again our goal is to make sure that you you have a good time here and then you find all the information you need and um, and you have all the equipment and the instrument that you need to succeed um, to succeed in your career now um, besides all the fun bit that help to actually um, actually spend all these three, four, five years with us, um, for some of you more, um, because you know some of you might want to stay with us for postgrad, for, for, for PhD even, or even to work with us. But anyway, the, the whole point is to have, um, uh, so you have to imagine this, this years with us as sort of soft training, okay? So it's a training to get into industry, to get, to, to get ready to what, um, what is the, is, is the work reality after uni. 
and obviously we don't want you to have any um, any shock moment <laughs> when you finish university and you start working and you suddenly realize that everything is different. What we normally do to avoid this is to give you a little um, uh, hints, a little gradual uh, getting you um, used to uh, the work environment. And to do that, we, um, we link you with different um, industry partners, industry contacts, uh, there are job experience, there are, uh, there are many, many ways, depending on what you do um, and which course you are in, to help you with this, to, to help you to get into kind of gradual um, familiarity with the, with the work environment. Um, obviously, part of this, uh, um, you know, obviously the, um, there is a huge focus of what we do in your career. So uh, you, might, you might imagine people from industry who will be your future em em employers to come to uni and see your work and to critique, comment your work and give you some sort of feedback uh, on, on what you're doing. And that's very helpful because you will be in some sort of protected environment, you know, when obviously they comment is helpful, but it's not determining whether you get a job or not at that particular stage, but it will give you a chance to uh, to see how, um, you know, it might be an art collector, it might be a, you know, a gallery museum uh, curator, or it might be a, you know, design director for a company, um, that they, um, they will tell you directly what they're expecting um, in terms of your work, and how, and then you will gradually realize how you can um, be more successful in finding the career and the job that you really want. Um, also, to give, to help you with this, we have uh, you know a large number of uh, awards and competitions that we organize with industry. Um, that um, again, they, they serve two purposes. On the one hand, they they kind of train you and teach you how to how to to be within industry people, as it were. But also, they help industry contacts to know you. So the, the idea there is that when you finish. You start this, uh, you have all these links and contacts that will be very, very uh, helpful to you when you, when you after the job you want. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and then, then I, will, I will show you very quickly a few um, examples of, of the, the beautiful work that our students do. This is a photography work. So I just want to show you, I won't talk at length about each of these work, but I just want to show you the, I suppose, the breadth and the um, the very, very different type of work that, that we produce in the school. So that's a photography work. And then there's an example, you can go for almost ad advertisement uh, work. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is Pro Design. That is, um, we're very proud of, of the work that Pro Design do because um, uh, not only they design very um, uh, effective, a very good design piece of design, but they also um, very useful for people. Though they try to solve social problem, uh, real problem that people have, and to actually not only uh, make cool design, but um, make um, people's life better in a way. So improve uh, all our life with you know with masks in this case. Or I don't know if you uh, next slide, please. Um, with, with other type of projects that you will see in a minute. But uh, this one is, um, I just want to show you here um, the two um, extreme of, of the work of a pro designer. So on the one hand, there is the, all the creative um, uh, fun work where you try to sketch and have quick ideas and test it and you draw it on the whiteboard, uh, you draw it on paper, you show it with your peers, with us, you get comments, feedback. You go back to the drawing board. You you uh, you refine your ideas until until you your show is is working, and after that you go into the production drawing, as you were. So the very technical side of um, of your project, where you actually create a schedule of uh, as it's called of all the components and how they go together and different material, different costs, how they um, how they are assembled, who is going to assemble them and all the, I suppose, uh, very uh, fine grain details of your project that will go into uh, the manufacturer in this particular case. So you will learn all, all the process from uh, initial idea sketching, so the, the very kind of um, creative side of, of your work, down to the very final 
last part where uh, you prepare drawing ready for, for being built and, 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 and created. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, when I mentioned students award, and this is part of what uh, you might call exposure. Um, remember that when you uh, finish uni, you will be uh, looking for a, for, for a job, for the job that you, that you want. And there might be things that make the difference when you're applying, things like um, the, uh, the awards that you got, or, or the you know the, I suppose the quality of the work that you've been doing and all these awards um, help very much I can tell you you know when um, when you can go to um, to a job interview with um, the picture of yourself or your name on a certificate uh, or an award given by you know a very big uh, firm or a website or one competition that it that it's great and it's got its own kind of weight into into the um the job interview so it will help you very much with that um next please yeah and then again that's interior architecture and the next slide it will be architecture if you can go to the next slide as well thank you so um just just architecture what i'm obviously i can talk for an hour about this because it's my subject but what i just want to say about this is um what i find fascinating you know after probably 20 years I've been doing these and I'm still finding it uh, mind blowing for me is, is the fact that you can take an empty, uh, kind of a blank sheet, an empty piece of paper and uh, what we say, create an atmosphere. So um, you will have all the tools to do this and you will start uh, thinking and imagining all the elements of design. So in this particular case, uh, walls, uh, lights, uh, buildings, uh, windows, uh, materials, all these things and you can create um, spaces or environments or places that uh, people will spend their life in you know they will they will have their family there they will have their friends there they will have the nice moment the sad moments and you are the person who actually are designed these old things so they, you will be uh, i suppose creating the framework for people to live their lives which is you know i still find it amazing and um you can also determine the way people might feel in these spaces. You know, in this particular case, this big picture is um, quite bleak and quite extreme. That's because it's a particular project. Uh, but you can see that um, it's basically saying something like on the outside world, it's cold and it's dark and it's possibly dangerous and unsafe uh, because of the unknown. But then inside my building, you see the light, you see warmth. Um, you see a kind of a welcoming atmosphere, and that's what you create as a designer. You create these places where, uh, again, you can decide or you can suggest how people should should feel, um, just using the, you know just using materials, just use a combination of different elements. So I suppose that is your job. Um, next one, please. Yeah, and I suppose that's my I guess my last uh, slide on this, and that's an illustration. Uh, students work again you can generate things that don't exist as a fine artist as a designer um, you can um, contribute to people's lives uh, by make them uh, you know happier or more cheerful um, by create stories um, so again i think you have to remember two things one is that um, um, your um, you will be gradually and hopefully um, very solidly trained to um, create things that don't exist and improve everybody's life with your work. Uh, so you have a huge responsibility, so no pressure on that. But, you know, we'll be here to help you. And that's my second message. Um, you will be part of this community. And this community is, um, it's an overall community made of all of us, students, tutors, um, students who finish with us and come back as alumni or uh, again, might become tutors or just friends of the school and the university. Um, and again, we're here for you. Uh, you have a very difficult job. You have to learn all the trade. You have to learn to create things that don't exist. Um, you have a purpose in all this. You have responsibility. But we're here as a community to do it with you. So hopefully, I think that's my last, last slide. I don't know. We'll see what it is. Yeah, that's another award, I think. Um, example of um of what we've been doing next one is that another video yeah
fine art specifically is I chose it because it's just it's so broad I mean you don't have to narrow yourself down into something quite specific if I knew how good it was I would have come here earlier it works because there's so much freedom I had the whole tour I was like yes this is what I want this is my first choice here I think they've got the perfect balance of guidance and independence I think the uni here really emphasizes on uh, individual growth like you can do performance, you know, photography, sculpture, painting, and that's sort of what I wanted, the, the opportunity to do it. And when I came here and just saw how much there was, you know, that I could do, that was sort of what, what made me want to come here. I've gone for a master's to a couple of universities, really good ones, and the, the space they had was just one board, I think. Everyone's lovely, all the tutors are lovely. I, d I love all of the lecturers. Uh, Michael was an incredible person. He doesn't give us limitations. He lets us express ourselves the way we want to, rather than tell us, oh, today you have to do this and this and this. He just says, what do you want to do? Uh, they're, they're as passionate about art as you are. They're not there to teach you, really. They're there to, to help you direct into what you actually want. They're not gonna tell you, Give, do me a landscape painting. They're all maybe slightly a little bit mad, but in, a, in the best way possible. The tutors here, they just really want you to enjoy yourself and then be yourself when you do your work. The confidence they give you is, the, is magnificent. It ended up being pretty much the best thing that I ever did because the people I've met here is crazy. Here you have that sort of pastoral care where you can go to them for, for anything creatively, you know, they'll guide you, there's some criticism there, that, or constructive criticism that you really need. I'm definitely more sure of myself than I was way before, a lot more confident. If you're really passionate about it and if you really want this course, you should jump on to this course and just do as much work as you can and just lose yourself. I would come here, I really would. I really would. Well, that's, that's nice to hear this. But again, I think the message, uh, if I can do it um, after this, this lovely video, I think there are three things here that you should probably uh, remember. Uh, the first one is that you saw the students say that, you know, your, I suppose your, your job in these three years is to find your own path, is to find your own individual way of expressing yourself, um, your own kind of way of designing, way of uh, creating art. Um, it's simply because, uh, again, we won't tell you, as the, the, the video was saying, we won't tell you what to do, well, we, we will. But um, we will leave it open enough for you to actually uh, be able to express and find the, 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 the space um, that works for you. The second one is really um, the idea of enjoying what you're doing, which is very important, you know, studying, at university level can be tough, sometimes can be, <clears throat> excuse me, can be uh, difficult. Uh, you know, I don't uh, lie to you. I mean, there might be times in the year when you have to do, you know, long hours and all nighters and, you know, it might be. Uh, but again, the, the trick there is to try to enjoy what you're doing. You know, if you're, if you're loving what you do, if you've got passion to, to you know, towards what, you, what you're doing, that it becomes a pleasure. That becomes a kind of fulfilling uh, experience because you're doing for you you know you're doing you're not doing for the deadline you know you're doing for for yourself because you're developing yourself and the final one i think you you heard in the video is about confidence and it's about the fact that um obviously we're all different you're all different and then it's you know it's fine but what we see is that students will have especially between the first and the second year they will have a huge transformation uh, some of you might be super confident, which is great, you know, it's helpful. Some of you might be a little bit more uh, discreet or reserved, uh, like myself, uh, which is fine. You know, it's absolutely fine, but um, you will need to find the confidence to talk about your work, to present your work. Um, and it's something that we, we help you with and your colleagues will help you with. So, uh, again, you will, you will learn how to do your work, but also how to show it, to talk about, to present it. To, to everybody else. Um, I think we got another uh, video now.
I think fashion is something everybody needs, and fashion is something you can be creative about, and uh, fashion is just being my passion all the time. The three years journey has been really helpful, uh, no matter uh, for me as a person or uh, professionally. Uh, first of all, I'm from China. I did a foundation year of creative arts here. First two years, we learned a lot of fashion practical skills, for example, sewing, uh, powder making and all that basic skills for me to be a proper fashion designer. However, the final year we learned so much about the fashion business side, which is a great combination for me as a fashion businessman because I want my product to be commercial. Four years ago, before I come to this country study fashion, the fashion business, I was really shy boy. My family want me to do something ordinary rather than fashion. And also, you know, as a gay man in China, I wasn't feeling myself as being myself, you know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't be myself in that environment with my family. That's why I came to this country to chase my dream. I want to be whoever I want. After four years study, I've been more open-minded because of all the culture clash and all the friends I make here, which is really helpful for my own design uh, because I really put myself into my design, into my business. Uh, that's why I come up with this new collection, which is gender neutral. Mushik is a gender neutral brand. As a fashion businessman, I want my garment to be commercial. I can sell the product rather than being an artist and being crazy about fashion. That's why I feel like this university, this uh, program is so helpful for me as an individual or as a fashion businessman. If I see myself four years ago, I want to tell myself to be patient because fashion is not something you can rush for. Uh, I know uh, in the first year, I would study fashion design. I was so rushed of everything and I messed up everything. So I want to tell myself four years ago that just stop rushing, be patient, and just uh, be confident of w whatever you make and just be confident in yourself, trust yourself, you're right. Yeah, so um, I think you, you, you noticed the very same message there. So find your own path, find your own way to do things, which is, you know, I suppose it's, it's all about you. It's very important. It's the best thing you can do in your life is to find what you really want to do. Um, again, it's about enjoying and, and kind of um, feel great and happy about, um, about your work, but also about the environment uh, you are in. And, and again, about your confidence. Um, so I think it's all about the same message. And um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done with my bit and I'm very happy to answer any question at the end. So um, yes. Thank you very much, Silvio. Some really exciting and passionate pieces coming through there and really nice to hear from some of the existing students and graduates as well. Um, we hope that's given everyone a bit of an idea across the courses of, of what you can expect. Um, I just wanted to confirm, because in one of our earlier videos, um, some of the officers have moved around since that one. So um, the school office has moved to the Hutton Hub. So that's still on College Lane campus. Um, it's in the, the heart of the campus as well. Um, and unfortunately, the pharmacy isn't on the campus anymore, but the doctor's office, the GP, is still on campus. So if you are going to live on campus, you'll be able to register there as well. Um, so I'll just give you a brief update on preparing for the start of term and then we'll move on to the Q&A section as well for everybody. So most of you um, will be at the point where you're clearing the last of your conditions. You might be in the process of paying your deposit as well to secure your place on the course. Some of you might be asked to complete a sponsorship interview or financial checks. If those are required for your application, our admissions team will be in touch with you via email just to let you know exactly what you need to do and give you some guidance on that as well. Once you've got your eight digit ID number and your conditional offer, that's when you'll be able to apply for the on campus accommodation and you'll actually get your offer of accommodation once you're at CAS stage as well. So. When you've cleared all your conditions, completed any additional checks that our admissions team have asked for, that's when they'll release the CAS to you. It'll come through via email and then you'll be able to apply for your visa as well. Now, we know there's a lot for you to think about this year, especially with COVID restrictions around travel. So we will be doing some pre-departure webinars on the run up to start of term. We'll be doing those um, mid-July to mid-September just to make sure that everybody can get a seat on one of our webinars. And we'll be sending out the invites over email within the next few weeks. So keep an eye on your email. 
During those webinar sessions, we'll cover everything from packing checklists, um, how you can travel if you're from a red list country, um, things that you need to prepare like your accommodation, quarantine requirements, how to order food when you're doing your quarantine. So we will make sure that you're fully prepared and you know what to expect for when you get here and any preparations you need to make before you fly as well. To go alongside our webinars, we'll also be releasing our pre-arrival guide, which will be pages on our website. Everything we cover in the webinars will be duplicated there, just so you can refer back to it and read it before you travel as well, just so you've got peace of mind that you've done everything that you need to do. Now, those of you who are currently going to be joining us from a red list country, just wanted to reassure you, you can still travel to the UK because you'll be on a student visa or you'll have valid leave to enter or remain. You can still journey to the UK, but you need to make sure that you use the quarantine hotels, which are approved by the UK government. So these hotels, it's actually referred to as the managed quarantine package. Um, the price, it'll include your transfers from the airport to your hotel any security that you might need while you're at the hotel, all your food and drink while you're at the hotel as well, and your COVID tests that you need to take on day two and day eight of being in the UK. The cost of the hotels, unfortunately, is something that the government has set out. The university doesn't get a say on the pricing. Um, if at any point we are able to support with any of that, we will let you know, but currently you will need to pay for this yourself. If you are traveling from an ambulance country, you still need to quarantine when you get to the UK, but you don't need to book into the approved quarantine hotels. Instead, you'll need to stay in your accommodation for that 10 day, 11 nights when you first enter the UK. So that's why it's important as well to join our pre-departure webinars because we'll be covering how you can order food and things for you to get involved in while you're completing your quarantine time as well. Um, accommodation booking. So as I've mentioned, accommodation applications for staying on campus are open now. You'll be able to get your offer of a room once you're at CAS stage, but you can apply now once you've got your conditional offer and eight digit student ID. And you'll be able to pick your preferences of the type of room you would prefer to stay in. And the accommodation team will always try and get you your first choice of room or second choice if the first one isn't available as well. If you do want to stay off campus, which we, we wouldn't recommend just because we do have additional support networks who have a bit more access to you if you are staying on campus, like our wellbeing team, our Dean of Students team. But if you do want to live off campus, please make sure that you use PAL accredited landlords. So what PAL is, it's actually a scheme that the university has set up with the local council just to make sure that all the properties displayed on the PAL website are in a good state of repair. All the images match what you're seeing online so you know what you're getting. And all the facilities within the accommodation, like the washing machine, the oven, uh, the fridge freezer, is all working correctly as well. And any deposit that you've had to pay is held securely. So it's really important. But we do recommend you live as close to campus as you can, just so you can walk to lectures. You don't have to think about the commute costs. And also, as we've mentioned, the LRC is open 24 seven. So you can pop there whenever you want to do a bit of extra study. And even if that's late at night. Now, once you have arrived in the UK, um, we will be doing our orientation and freshers week. So orientation usually is um, about a week before term starts. We'll send you out more information about the activities happening closer to the time as well. Um, but this will usually be the time then that you're completing your quarantine if you're coming from an amber or red list country. So we're going to make sure uh, working with our Dean of Students team that there's plenty of online activities as well that you can get involved in just to keep you occupied during that time. So there'll be things like online cooking competitions, online gaming competitions, breakout rooms where you can meet your fellow classmates, um, quizzes, lots and lots to get involved in as well. There'll also be a self-isolation activity pack that our Dean of Students team has created. So this is full of things that you can do in your own time at your own pace as well. So we know that some of you might have traveled quite a long way. You might be experiencing a bit of jet lag when you first come to the UK and your sleep pattern might be a little bit different. So if you're waking up in the middle of the night, you can enjoy some of the activities in the self-isolation pack. There'll be things like uh, mindfulness activities, quizzes, um, exercises as well. So lots of things for you to get involved in. 
Now, once you've completed your quarantine and you've done those two COVID tests on day two and day eight of your quarantine that have come back negative, um, you'll be able to then start walking around the campus and going to any in-person events that are organised for the Freshers Week as well. During Freshers, you'll be able to meet the students' union representatives and also the societies and clubs that we've got on campus. So there's hundreds of societies. There's something for everybody, whether you're into uh, anime or dance groups or religious groups, um, there's something for everyone. If there's a particular interest you have and a society doesn't already exist, you can speak to your students' union representative and they will help you set up a club for that so you can meet fellow people who are interested as well. There's also 28 sports clubs at the university. You don't have to be an expert. There are ones for beginners as well. So if there's a new sport that you want to try out while you're at Hearts, you can join one of the beginner groups there as well. Um, for the sports clubs, usually in normal years, they will get to represent the university at competitions against other unis as well. And as we've mentioned, there's also our chaplaincy on campus and religious groups for you to get involved in. So. Also, we know that a lot of people might be a little bit worried about how the COVID restrictions are. The university has been working very hard to make a COVID secure campus. So what that means is we've increased cleaning across the social spaces and the common areas. Um, there's also those food delivery options that I mentioned. So if you do have to isolate at any point during your studies, if you are living on campus, the campus shop now offers food delivery options so they can actually bring your food order direct to your accommodation door. Local supermarkets will offer a similar service for those of you staying off campus as well. There's also increased support for anybody who needs to isolate. So the specialist wellbeing teams and the Dean of Students teams at Hertfordshire are there if you need any assistance at all while you are a student with us. That's why I've mentioned we prefer you to live on campus if you can, just because then the resources are right there on your doorstep. Anything you need, we can get to you really easily. There's also screens, signs and hand sanitisation stations around the campus. So you'll see those as you're walking around just to give everyone peace of mind. You can use all the hand sanitisation stations as you're going in and out of lectures or any of the cafes or the buildings. You can use those. And also, excitingly, um, the vaccine is currently being rolled out through the UK population. So the government's just announced that anybody over the age of 18 can now book in for their COVID vaccine. When you apply for your student visa, you'll have to pay the NHS health surcharge, which allows you to use the NHS as normal once you're enrolled at the university. So once you've enrolled at the university, you'll be able to register with a GP in the UK and then you'll go into the normal queue for the COVID vaccine in the UK and you'll either get a text or a letter letting you know when it's your time to book your vaccine as well. The vaccine is free in the UK, it's part of the NHS. We know that some of you may have already been able to get the vaccine in your home country. That's fine. You still need to complete the quarantine requirements, though, even if you have been vaccinated. But being vaccinated, it's not a requirement to travel to the UK because we know it's not available to everybody. So as long as you're doing your quarantine period, that's fine. And you can follow the travel guidance and restrictions as well. Just make sure you're booking into the quarantine hotels if you are traveling for a red list so you don't risk any fines. Now, we've just got one more video from one of our creative arts student who was doing illustration, um, who actually created some graphics for us last year to go around the campus just to make people mindful about wearing their masks in social spaces as well. After this video, we'll go to the Q&A. So I can see some of you started posting questions already, which is excellent. If anybody's got any more, please send them through now. Hello, I'm Ali. I'm a second year illustration student at Hertfordshire and I've designed a large scale piece of artwork to be displayed on campus. My idea with this was to create a series of fictional villains who are known for wearing um, masks over their mouths to encourage students who can to wear their masks on campus. I aimed to choose characters that could be recognisable from a distance, um, although I did struggle to find female villains that fit that bill. I created the textures and patterns of the characters by using paint and then pressing materials like kitchen roll and tracing paper into it and then scanning those in to um, 
into Photoshop and manipulating them on there. To create the characters' faces, I used oil pastel on tracing paper, so it was see-through, I could scan it onto the computer and it would just uh, overlap the patterns. Excellent. So we hope that you all have enjoyed this session so far. Lots of things for you to see um, and also really nice to hear about the community feel at heart. So it does feel like one big family once you join and enroll and start getting involved with things as well. Um, but we'll move to the Q&A now. So we'll have a look at some of the questions that have come through um, and we'll read them out on your behalf to our panellists. Yeah, we've had lots of brilliant questions already. Thank you, everyone. Just make sure you post them through. Um, so, Silvio, I wonder if you can answer this question. Someone's asked, is it possible to change or switch courses during the second year of study? Uh, during the second, you mean in the middle of the second or between the first and the second? So when the second is starting? It says in the second year. <laughs> so I'm wondering if it's this at the start can, of year two. Yeah, sure. I can elaborate a little bit. So thank you. Um, the short answer is yes, but obviously it depends on the subject. So, um, for instance, um, some program, uh, some programs are designed to allow this, and there is a little clause somewhere in the program specification that says if students want to then swap between one program to another at the end of the first one, at the end of the first year, they can do so, provided that you know obviously they have a chat with their tutors and explain why they want to do that. So the good reason, absolutely yes. But there are also, you know, there are, I suppose, things that might be a little bit difficult. Like, you know, if you start doing fine art, okay, and then you want to go to, in the second year, you want to go to architecture, then it will become a slightly difficult. Uh, it just because, for instance, architecture has a professional body attached to it that recognizes the, the Grace that comes out of the course. So uh, that particular professional body might not be happy with uh, students who didn't do the first year with us. So in that particular case, we need to really look at what the students has. Uh, you know, perhaps they have previous experience with design. So we need we need to look at a case by case um, scenario there. But in in general, just to answer generically, yes, it's possible, and especially because the first year is designed in general across the board in art and design to be some sort of um, introduction to generic art and design skills. So more or less, you know, all the skills and the project you, you do that are, you know, kind of transferable or the things that you learn in the first year, they're applicable to the second year. Once you finish the second year or in the middle of the second year, they might become a little bit problematic. But my suggestion is uh, obviously um, do the first year, um see how you know you enjoy the projects so you enjoy the activities and just chat with um your tutors every time but also we do activities that are across department or even across schools so you you might find we stop all the teaching for a week some 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 point and we have the same project with different teams of students from different parts of the school and that's a great opportunity for you to actually see what other courses do and you know, those are the moments where you can actually see what well, actually I quite like illustration or I quite like that. That's fantastic, thank you. Thank you, Silvio. So I've got a student from India who's explaining that they're gonna get their results on the 31st of July. Um, what should they do to complete the conditions of the offer? They're actually coming to do product design, which is excellent. So, um, don't worry, you can still send in your results um, once you receive them on the 31st of July. I would recommend aim to clear as many of your conditions on your offer as you can. So whether that's paying your deposit, um, if you need to send in references or an amended personal statement, anything else that you've been asked to do that you can clear, start clearing those so you've only got, say, your results left to send in. Once you've sent those in, the admissions team will be able to update your offer then to academically unconditional and tell you what to do next. Fantastic. Thank you, Kat. And um, sorry, sorry, oh, just, sorry, can, sorry. Quickly, um, can I just suggest to all students and applicants, uh, make sure you, you, you stay in touch with your tutors. So in this particular case, make sure you have, you know, you just send an email to your tutor in Pro Design for it so they know they're kind of expecting you. They know that you will be in. So if they don't see you, they might 
ask you know where you are and make sure that you're you know you're able to come in so make sure we know also sorry no, that's fantastic advice. Absolutely. And just keeping the admissions team aware as well. So just keep us updated. Definitely. Um, Silvio and Robert, I've got um, a question for you both. So um, it's as a student in MA graphic design, is there kind of any internship opportunities to experience real life design practice? Um, Robert, do you want me to answer that? Yeah, please. Yeah, OK. Um, it's not a formal uh, job experience, but um, we definitely encourage that and if we know that you you want to do it that will definitely the sooner we know the better we can organize that for you um and it's quite easy for us to do because obviously as i said uh, some of our tutors are also practitioners but also people who are part of the course as you were you know in kind of general sense so they come for a day a week or they come to do one-off lecture or even to feedback on your work uh, they are normally practitioners so they have their own office or agency so um it will be easy for us to actually um, organize that so we need to know it um, <laughs> that's fantastic thank you so i've got another question here from um, an applicant who will be coming to do the ma interior architecture um, they've just, just asked, um, is there any help in the job search um, after the course? And also, will there be any 3D software that's taught during the course? Um, I'm laughing because the, I'm one of those who teaches the 3D software uh, in, in that program, particular program. So, um, <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> and I can give you all the specifics if you like. But um, so obviously the well, the problem, I suppose the thing we have with interior master's students is that they all normally come from different parts of the world, different courses. So some of our students have a very good experience in 3D modeling and 3D software. Some of our students have less experience in 3D software. So um, obviously, if the students come from our undergrad, then we know what the, the level of expertise is. But if they come from another course, then obviously we don't know. So what we do at the beginning of the year, um, October, November, is we do a couple of um, workshops. So um, they are two or three weeks long, where I or I or the colleagues organize uh, projects to see just the level. So if you are interested in what type of software we teach, we normally do Rhino, we do Lumion, um, uh, you know, 3D Max. Depends on what 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 we want to do. I'm personally more into um, the parametric side, so. You know, if students are a little bit more interested or to more advanced things, uh, you know, I would normally give um, classes of um, grasshopper and parametric design and all that business. But uh, yes, and to answer your first question is um, um, if we help students to get a job after they finish their master, the answer is yes. But I always say to all of our students, it really depends, we need to know you. You know, we need to know what your ambitions are, what you want to do, what, uh, and also to discover what kind of your your skills are and what you're good at. And you will you will tell us, you will discover yourself, but also we need to know it uh, in conversation with you and looking at your work. So um, based on that, um, obviously, um, we'll definitely help you. I think I might say a little bit more. What normally happens is that we have the opposite problem, where I normally receive a phone call in the middle of nowhere from an employer, from an office. I say, listen, we got this deadline. We need somebody to start next Monday or to start in a month's time. Uh, do you have any good students to, to, to recommend? Or even more, I normally, you know, we have projects that come to us, research projects or design projects. And we normally do that with students or ex-students. Um, so yes, <laughs> we need, I mean, you might, you might think now that uh, the problem is for you to get a job, but the problem on our side is to find people to actually do this work. So uh, yeah, <laughs> there will be a problem. Excellent, thank you, Silvio. So yes, make sure that you um, are making yourself known to your tutors because they, they are key in helping you. They are the experts. They've got a wealth of knowledge and experience and the contacts as well. So excellent, very good point there, Silvio as well. I think we've got time for one more question. Um, and then we'll we'll just round up the session. Let me just see if I can see any further questions on here. Jess, I think you've got one 
highlighted as well yeah I've got one highlighted here Sylvia or Robert I'm not sure if either of you can help with this or of course you can but uh, whoever wants to take this question so the question is uh, this year will teaching still be online for September Robert I, I just don't want to talk no you're good no I, I I think I think this is another one that you're best to answer sure. Sylvia thank you <laughs> right okay um yeah we don't know I mean the short answer is we don't know yet we are Obviously, we are planning everything for next year as a hybrid. Um, so there are two things you have to know or you have to consider. Well, the first one is obviously the government guidelines that we have to abide by. So we are obviously constantly looking into um, what the guidelines are. Um, as you know, there, might, there will be another update on the 21st of July. Um, so we'll see what, what the advice there will be. But for now, we're just planning um, a hybrid um, delivery. By hybrid, we mean that whatever can be done online or is kind of makes sense to do it online. Let's say a lecture with a lot of people, then we do it online. Um, or whether sometimes it's a um, demonstration for software. Sometimes you just have to look at the screen and it's helpful to have it recorded because you can go back and you know, if you don't understand one bit, you can stop, try something, go back to, to the point that, um, that you need more, more detail about. So those things will be probably delivered online. Um, but the rest, like one-to-one -one tutorials, um, presentations, um, perhaps small seminars where we need to get together and discuss some topic in, in a small group, then we'll, we'll do it uh, you know face to face so uh, again it's 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 a little bit a luxury now because it's a kind of picking and choose um what is best so um that's what's going to happen we don't i personally don't i might be proved wrong hopefully but i don't think we're going to go back um full on um uh, face to face from september i don't think it's going to happen uh, i think there will still be limitations in terms of how many students you can have in the same space um, it might be the case that we have uh, those limitations and we just split the cohort. So we split the groups of students in, instead of having a big lecture with 60 people, we might have one lecture uh, with 20 people or with 15 students. And then, then we do it again with another group. So yeah, hybrid. That's fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Um, so that brings us to the end of the hour then, everybody. Um, for Silvio and Robert, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you on the session. Um, myself and Jess will just round up the last few minutes. So if you do have other appointments that you have to get to, please feel free to leave us now. But thank you very much to Jess too for your help with the questions and all our attendees as well. We can't wait to welcome you to Hertfordshire in September. If you do still have questions about the um, application process or anything to do with clearing your conditions, we do have an Instagram Live Q&A later today on our international Instagram channel. You can speak to Gavin and Cayman and ask them any questions you have. If you do want to hear more from international students and ask them questions about their journey, our next session we've got with Jane, who's joined us from Nigeria. Um, she's actually going to be on our Instagram channel tomorrow at 11 a.m. UK time. And lastly, if you do have any compliance questions as well, so anything to do with applying for your visa um, or clearing your finance conditions or sponsorship interview as well, then we do have a special compliance Instagram live on the 29th of June with compliance officer Shaloni Gray as well. That's at 4 p.m. UK time. So you're welcome to join in any of those. You can ask questions or even just to listen in. It's well worth stopping by as well. If you do want to contact our office, you can always email us at international at hearts.ac.uk. A lot of the questions you might find on our website as well, so you can check that out. And if you've got any urgent queries, feel free to call our office on that number on screen as well. That number is also available on our website for you. Um, but thank you very much, everybody. I'll play one last video while myself and Jess will answer any typed questions to try and clear up the rest of the Q&A. But we hope you all enjoy the rest of your days. Thank you.